Jagardev, Jaya Masters, once you reach a certain state, the meaning of life is like, look at the hand in front of your face. It's the clearest thing. There's never any question. There's no uncertainty. It all has meaning, tremendous meaning, meaning beyond your comprehension, every moment. That's what it means to be clear. Somebody wrote us the other day and said that I keep talking about infinite space, trillions of galaxies, 300 billion suns in your galaxy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They said, well, it makes you seem so meaningless. It all means nothing. No, it means everything. You are part of that. Wow. You're sitting in a place that 1.3 million Earths fit inside the sun. There's 300 billion suns in one galaxy, and there's 2 trillion galaxies. That's very, very, very big. And you're part of that. And just like every star stays in orbit, and every galaxy orbits other galaxies, and black holes eat everything, all of it is in harmony with itself. All of it's evolving, all of it's expanding. All of it started with the Big Bang and grew into all this, expanding out, and all things got created, and you are part of that. That's unbelievable. Well, how do we be part of it? By being part of that instead of being all you. Seriously. Like, now, you say, well, I am part of it. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's why you don't like to think about it. That's why you think it makes you feel small and meaningless and you don't like it. No. It gives you tremendous meaning. What? You have a job just as the star has a job, just as the sun has a job, just as the galaxy have jobs, just like everything in creation is part of the whole. You are part of all of that. If your mind only thinks about you and what you want, and what you like, and what your past was, and what you believe, you know, is, is locked in this tiny little world called your mind, and in this tiny little world called your heart. That's all you think about. Don't be embarrassed. You have to know that. You have to come to honest truth. You only think about yourself. No, yes. But what about my children? I heard the word my. What about my job? What about my finances? What about my complexion? What about my hair? What about my aging? What about whether people like me? What if people don't like me? What if I don't like them? <laughs> Every word is I, me, mine, isn't it? It is all about you. But isn't that what it's about? No. No, it's not. It's about the whole universe. And you are part of that universe. That's the truth. The trouble is, if I tried to get you out of yourself, it's not easy to do. I mean, it's not easy for you to do, or me. What happens is you say something like, yeah, 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 I understand. There's two trillion galaxies. But what's that got to do with me? How's that going to help me make a living? How's it going to help me find someone to love? How's it going to help me fix my relationship? How's it going to stop wars? How's it going to... Are you? That me. Every bit of it says, I can't be part of that. And it can't be part of me. Because I'm too busy with me. I'm too busy thinking about what I like, what I don't like, what I want, what I don't want, what I believe, what are my hopes, what are my dreams. They teach you, and it's fine. I told you, you're welcome to listen to me, but when you leave, forget it. Because it just won't fit your world, all right? Like hopes and dreams. People would say hopes and dreams are spiritual. Hopes and dreams are not spiritual. Why? The hopes are about you. What do you hope? Someday it'll be the way I want. Right or wrong? You hope someday it won't be the way you are? What are your dreams? I dream that someday it'll be perfect for me. It'll be like heaven and everything will be the way I want it to be and everyone will love me and everyone will get along. In other words, it'll be the way I want. That's what you're hoping for and that's what you're dreaming of. Now, the reason they teach you that hopes and dreams are spiritual is because we are so lost in ourselves that we get negative. Why? Because this just won't be the way I want it to be. You start getting depressed. Then you give up hope. See that, right? You give up hope. No, I want you to have hope rather than being depressed. Okay? Then when you're done with that, let's be part of the whole. Instead of trying to make what's in front of you be part of you. Because it's not part of you. It's part of the whole. Every single thing in Einstein's time-space continuum 
every spot of all of time and all of space is there because of everything that made it be there. Because of everything that came before it, it manifested in that moment the sum total of all the forces that made it be that way. What does that got to do with you? It has nothing to do with you. Do the rings of Saturn have something to do with you? No. Does the car driving by, you don't even know them and you hardly see it. Does it have something to do with you? No. Well, it has something to do with you. Does it have anything to do with you what's going on in Beijing in a particular house where families are fighting or getting along? No, no, don't talk to me about it. I don't have time for that. It has nothing to do with me. Okay, that's really interesting. What well, has something to do with you? The part that I'm experiencing right now and how it affects what I want. That's what has to do with me. What I'm experiencing, what I have experienced, it's just locked in this. That's why they teach you mind. It's hard. A fish doesn't know they're in water. They never got out. You don't know you're in mind because you never got out. Even the spiritual. I've been meditating. I think I'm doing well, but I don't know. I can't stop my mind. That's mind. That's the same talking head. It's just talking about something different. You are listening to your thoughts talking to you. I don't care if they're talking spiritual or they're talking non-spiritual, whatever it is. You are still locked into you as opposed to the whole universe or any other part other than you. So your only interest is what is going on in your mind, what is going on in your heart, and what has gone on in your mind, what has gone on in your heart. You bring into the current moment, which is creation. The current moment is creation. This is what creation created. <laughs> How do you know? What does the Bible say? Let those who have eyes to see, let them see. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Of course, this moment is what creation created, isn't it? How did it get there? You didn't make it. You're trying to remake it. Because <laughs> you want it to be what you want. There it is. Me, 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 I, me, mine. That's ego. What is ego? Is ego evil? No. Ego is a thing in the universe, like a blender or a car. It's a thing in the universe that creates thoughts about itself. It's a thought-making machine that only thinks about itself. Like I said, I try to get you to think about galaxies and things. And the ego says, fine, fine, I understand. What's it got to do with me? Okay. It's like a magnet, isn't it? It brings everything back to me, everything back to me. I used to get embarrassed when I first woke up. Someone would tell me, hey, man, I just got a new car. You know what my mom would say? I don't think I need one. I didn't say anything about your car. I told you, I got a new car. No, all it does is bam. It draws everything back to you. If you think it's not true, I want you to watch something. Somebody's talking to you. I don't care if it's a friend, not a teacher, any of this. Somebody's talking to you. You watch what is going on in your mind where that person's telling you what they want to say. You are judging what they're saying. You are relating it to whether you believe in it or not. You're relating it to what happened to you before or not. Or you're not even listening to it. You think about what you're going to do when they stop talking to you and wasting your time. <laughs> you are not sitting there listening to what that person has to say. Can you hear me? That ego mind only thinks about itself. So what? It's fine. If you want to, turn on a blender and stand there and stare at it all day. That will be your life. <laughs> if you want, watch your ego all day. Watch your ego talk about yourself. Watch your ego talk about what you like, what you don't like, how to get it, how to get rid of it, how to avoid it. It's about you. And you don't realize it because we don't get out. If you ever meditated deeply, you've gotten out. And you say things like, oh my God, there were no thoughts. It was so quiet, it was so beautiful, so peaceful. All right? I find that interesting. I'm glad you have states like that, moments like that. I'm interested in what happens when you come back. How long does it take for that mind to start up? <laughs> That's hilarious. The minute anything happens, it's talking. Even if it's saying, oh my God, it's disturbing my peace. Why do I have to call now? There you go. The phone did not disturb your peace. You did. You were out S to some degree. I don't care what degree it is. It doesn't interest me. Interest me. But you were out to some degree. What pulled you back? The phone did not pull you back. Okay, the phone could have been ringing when you're out. You didn't even hear it because you transcend your senses. But the moment you come back, what does it mean come back? Bring your consciousness focus back down on you. Where'd you come back from? Your consciousness not being focused on you. Well, what happens if your consciousness is not focused on you? I taught you in the 60s, I'm a 60s boy. In the 60s, they all talk about expanded consciousness. 
at some point I realized that's ridiculous. It's not about expanded consciousness, expanding consciousness. It's about not contracting consciousness. So when you come back from an open experience, then what you do is your consciousness gets pulled back down to you. So it contracts to where it's only paying attention to the thoughts about you. And then you feel that. <laughs> you feel your problems. You feel your issues. Well, they were there exactly the same when you weren't focusing on yourself. You were open, experiencing something much deeper. Hey, it doesn't have to be deep meditation. It can be in the arms of your beloved. They just melt. Ever melted? Why do you come back? <laughs> it doesn't take much. The moment something happens, that brings you back. Now you understand what coming back means. You didn't go anywhere. Your body's still standing there. Your consciousness was able to transcend being addicted to focusing on the thoughts about you. It got filled with love. You hear me? It just felt all this beautiful energy and it melted. I think I melted. It melted into it and so on, right? Okay, well, what happened? I thought you liked that. Why'd you come back? All right? You can't stay out there. Why? Because you are addicted to your mind. You're addicted to your ego. The consciousness, the minute that ego starts, one thought, one thought, oh my God, what am I going to do about the mortgage? Next thing you know, there's 50 thoughts. Such a hadn't happened, I'd be okay, but why did he do Oh my God. <laughs> okay? That is what it means to be on a spiritual journey. That you have caught on that that's what's going on. It's about me. Everything's about me. What is spirituality? Not me. Why is not me spiritual? Because if your mind, your ego mind, there's the other parts of your mind that are very high, very beautiful, but the ego mind, what is an ego mind? A mind that creates thoughts about me. There. Can you think about Saturn? Can you think about a boat? Can you think about a cloud? Can you think about a galaxy? You can think about anything you want, can't you? Your mind is completely free to create any thoughts you want. It only creates thoughts about itself. If you leave it alone, it creates thoughts about itself. That is the ego mind. It's not the whole mind. There's tons of mind. There's infinite mind. This is thoughts about myself. So the consciousness gets drawn. I want you to see it. The consciousness, the focus of awareness, that's what consciousness is, the focus of awareness. It gets drawn down to what the ego mind is saying and what the ego heart, personal mind, personal heart, what they're feeling, what's saying and feeling. And that's it. You're not going anywhere. You're going to do what it tells you to do. I don't like him. I don't like what's happening here. Get up, leave. That's what you do. Oh my God, I want to know more about this. Oh, I'm getting interested. Whatever your mind says you do. Because you haven't learned that you're not your mind. You are the awareness that is aware of your mind. Do you know you have thoughts? Who has thoughts? How do you know? How do you know you have thoughts? Eventually you'll look at me and say, because I'm in here and I hear them. That's right. That's why I call it the voice in your head. That's very interesting, the voice in your head. Not as interesting as who hears it. Who is aware that there is a talking head in there causing trouble? <laughs> okay? And well, what's aware is awareness. What else would be aware? Awareness is aware. Is this glass aware that I'm looking at it? No. Am I aware that I'm looking at the glass? This is called consciousness and object of consciousness. Subject, object. I am the subject. When? Always. I am aware of my thoughts. Are you aware of your emotions? I forgot to ask you. Are you ever aware of your emotions? Oh my God, since she loved me, my heart is breaking. You know, it feels like razor blades inside. How do you know? You don't want to come to me one on one. But that's what I'm going to ask you. How do you know? That's very interesting. How do you know? I want to know how you know. I don't know what's going on inside of you. How do you know what's going on in there? Eventually you yell at me because I'm in here and I feel it. Who is? Who is in there aware that the mind has thoughts? Aware that the heart has feelings? Aware that the body sends its messages back? Does your body send your messages back to you? If I touch my arm, you don't feel it. Touch your arm, you feel it. Why? Because your body is sending messages back to you. Back to who? The same one who's aware of the thoughts, the same one that's aware of the emotions, the same one who looks through the eyes, the same one who hears the... There's just one of you in there, and these are all the different things that you're aware of. You're the subject. They're all objects. The trouble is, they are very strong objects to you. Your dramas don't mean squat to me or him or him. It's all the same. It's just something that exists in the universe. Thoughts. Someday you're going to find out they're not your thoughts. They're thoughts that a part of the mind is generating 
because of the data that it's experienced in the past. Somebody dumped on you. Somebody was nice to you. Somebody was blonde. Somebody was this. Your mother was this. All the experiences you had, your mind holds on to some of that, and it keeps talking about it. Oh, yeah, I really like him. Why? He reminds me of my brother. He's not your brother. Just because he looks like your brother's haircut or is about the same height. But you do it all the time. Do you understand that? The data comes in from the outside. What data? The data. The real world comes in. You in there, the consciousness, don't let it pass through. You hold on to some of it, let other stuff go. You suppress, you cling, you do all kinds of stuff, and you build a set of thoughts that go on all the time, don't you? I'm the person that likes this sort of thing, and I don't like it. I'm serious about it, too. I told you not to talk to me like that. You know I don't like that. My father talked to me like that. That's not you. That's a programmed part of the mind that is programmed due to past experiences, and now it's talking. It's trying to release the experiences. It's trying to express itself, and you're in there noticing. And you say, that's my mind. Did you make the experiences? Did you make every experience you ever had? You make the experiences. You experience the experiences. You experience the experience. You didn't make the experience. Did you make the atoms to make up the experience? Did you make the person who showed up? You You didn't make anything. If you go to a restaurant somewhere you've never been before, it was there for a long time before you showed up. (laughs) But you put you in there. The music's too loud. I can't believe it. Somebody's smoking. He's smoking outside, but the smoke's still coming in. But what's so special? Oh, my God. I feel like I'm a vegetarian. This moment that has nothing to do with you is supposed to be yours, isn't it? It's supposed to have nothing to do with you, isn't it? Who said so? Me. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. It existed way before you. It exists everywhere as you're not. But the ego is so big that the moment I drop your consciousness into that moment, you own it. It's yours. And you start judging it and talking about it and liking it and not liking it. What happens if it's the way you don't want it to be? What happens if it happens to be, the moment in front of you happens to be the way you don't want it to be? Are you ready? It's wrong. Isn't it? It's wrong. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that. I would have never said that. Well, I don't get it. What's it got to do with you? It's something somebody else said. That's like my saying when the person says, I got a new car. I don't need one. That person has nothing to do with you. They have to do with all the some psychological experiences and their experience that they had throughout their life. You weren't there, and they happened to be standing here, and they said something, and you said, oh, God, I would never have said that. I can't believe you said that. That's how strong the ego mind is. And so the consciousness, there is no, if I'm staring at that picture, there's a whole other things in the room. I don't have to stare at the picture, but if I am staring at the picture, that's the only thing in my life. There's nothing else in my life. As long as you stare at your ego mind, that is your life. There's nothing else going on. There is an entire part of this room that is other than the picture I'm staring at, not to mention what's bigger than the room. There is an entire part of the universe that is enormously beyond what you are staring at, which is your tiny little thoughts that are so minuscule it's ridiculous, right? But, but I know what's going on. How? I've had these experiences. I always ask you this, and I can tell whether the light goes on in your eyes. At any moment you're having an experience, how many are you missing? How many experiences are going on that you're not experiencing? Where? Everywhere. Ever here is zero plus zero plus zero plus zero times zero times zero is zero. What you are picking up at any given moment is point oh 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 one percent of what's going on. And it's that time, every single moment is like that. Therefore, you know nothing. (laughs) Okay? I told you. Statistically insignificant. That's the right word for what you know. I know it's insulting. Is it not true? Do you know what you didn't experience? Which one do you know what you didn't experience? And by the way, reading, a movie, that's part of the experience. What do you know that you never experienced? Nothing. Any moment you're having an experience... How many experiences are you missing? All of them. Therefore, you know nothing. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. I love it. I love it. It's the truth. Does that mean I didn't have the experiences? You were God's representative at that moment to experience the moment that had been created. That's the meaning of your life. Not to get what you want or decide how to do this and believe it, make all this stuff up in your mind. God's consciousness is what's looking down upon God's creation. And you are the representative. You're the only one that experiences the moment you're experiencing. 
Not only do you not experience all the other moments, nobody else experienced that moment exactly like you did. Different angle, different this, right? And, and even if it was close to the angle, you're going to go over here, they go somewhere else. No one has had the sequence of events that you've had in your life. No one ever did, no one is having them, and no one ever will. What is that telling you? You're important. You don't have to be important because your ego said so. You are the only one experiencing that part of God. If it's true that God's creation is God's creation, and the consciousness, it's all God consciousness, but it's looking down into his or her creation, this is your moment. Oh my God. Wow, that's pretty important. If you're the only one that will ever experience it, no one ever did, no one ever will, I think you're pretty important. Spirituality is to realize you're a very great being. Your consciousness is. Your consciousness is amazing. Where'd consciousness come from? Right? Seriously. You know you're conscious. You're just so interested in what you're conscious of. You're way more interested in what you're conscious of than you are what consciousness is or where it comes from. Spirituality is about seeking the source of consciousness. All right? Mayor Baba, a great enlightened master, said, man minus mind equals God. In other words, if your ego mind is not drawing your consciousness down to this tiny little spot, it expands out to encompass everything. It's called enlightenment. Just like I don't have to stare at the picture, I can stare at the picture for hours and months and days, and all of a sudden I don't. Whoa, where'd this come from? That's what it means to not stare at your mind. And he's talking about your ego mind. There's higher mind, but we'll deal with that maybe. All right? But the point is your ego mind is so strong that your consciousness is addicted to watching your ego mind, and it probably has never not. Okay? <laughs> it's deep stuff. But you don't have to. Why would you have to stare at your mind? I don't have to stare at the picture. If I'm staring at the picture for a long time, there must be something going on inside of me that's making me stare at that picture. It scares me. I'll look at it, make sure it doesn't get me, all right? Or I, it reminds me of something really that I love so much. There's going to be something inside of me that's making me stare at the picture, all right? You're not starting at the picture. So you don't have to be fixated on your mind. The reason you're fixated on your mind, let's do it very quickly, because you are fixated on your ego mind. Does everybody understand that? You are more addicted to your ego mind than any drug addict is addicted to the drug. You know how I know? The reason they do drugs is because they can't handle their mind. If their mind was totally happy and they were filled with love and joy all the time, they take a drink, take the edge off. What edge? There's no edge. I'm filled with love, I'm filled with joy. But if you're not, and you have major problems and your mind's bothering you all the time, and you go to an opium den or something, I know you don't do opium, so I'll mention that one. All right? They, they, because there's some freedom for you. You don't have to listen to your mind. That's why people do drugs. That's why people drink. That's why every, don't you talk to me about spiritual drugs. There's only one reason anybody does a drug. They're not okay with their mind. And it changes their experience. At some point, you realize it's all the same. You're in there. The consciousness is a very great thing. Consciousness is the most magical, important thing in the universe. How do I know? I do this in, in uh, Untied the Soul. All right? You're in a room. A lot of things in a room. A lot of people, pianos, music, food. Beautiful. It's Spielberg's house. He came to the party. All this stuff's going on there. All right? Are you aware of the things that are going on? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take the people out. Are you aware the people are gone? Sure. Is it the same you that was aware the people were there as the you that now is aware the people are gone? Still you. <laughs> same consciousness. All right. Now let's take away all the furniture to the piano. Are you aware that all the furniture is gone? And all the people are gone. Answer me. Yeah. Well, same thing. You, was it a lot of effort for you to be aware? No, <laughs> no you're just aware. Right? Not take the piano away. Are you aware? Oh my God, room's empty. Not take the room away. Are you aware that the room has disappeared? Of course you are. So I can take away all the objects of consciousness, and you're still there, aren't you? Now I'm going to fill the whole people back up, and I'm going to turn a little switch back there, and you're not there anymore. Now what? meaningless, isn't it? If consciousness is not there, nothing has meaning. If consciousness is there, everything is an experience. You are the consciousness. That's who you are. You are the consciousness. But that consciousness is addicted to watching your mind. Why? Your mind is made up 
of the experiences that you either liked or didn't like throughout your life. I guarantee that's what your mind talks about. That's how you figure out your preferences. What are my preferences? The sum total of what made me feel better in my past, I think will make me feel better now. So I have my preferences. What are your not likes, your dislikes? The sum total, which is much bigger, by the way, of all the things that bothered me in my past, anything that ever happened that bothered me, I don't want it to happen again, do you? Therefore, my mind is made up of my past experiences that I can't even keep them all. There's all kinds of trees that went by, cars went by. You can keep those. White lines. I like white lines. How many white lines have you kept? <laughs> None. You drive by them all the time. Okay? But somebody says something you don't like, you remember that. If somebody says something you really do like, you remember that. And so you built your mind out of the most powerful experiences that you had that you were unable to handle. What do you mean? You couldn't handle it. It either bothered you so much that you suppressed it, kept it in there, or you liked it so much that you couldn't let it go. You wanted it to happen again. I told you last time, those are the building blocks of your ego. These experiences that you didn't let go of, you kept inside through will, now have been put together by you into a house called me. What happens if somebody doesn't agree with you? You are a great swimmer. Tell somebody, I was, I was a great swimmer in college and I almost went to the Olympics. You liar. You didn't do anything. You just make that stuff up. How you doing? A little bit of stuff going on in there, a little defensiveness, right? You built that house, and you can defend that house, aren't you? Why? Because there's a reason you built the house. You were lost. You didn't know who you were. You weren't comfortable, and so you took pieces of life, put them together, and said, this is me. Psychology calls it a self-concept. You built a me. That's your ego. You built a me. So it's not so easy not to stare at it, is it? Because you have to defend it. You have to make sure everybody does what they're supposed to do. Manipulate, control everybody and everything so that you feel more comfortable. Okay, that is, I call it the human predicament in the new book. Called Living Untethered Beyond the Human Predicament. That is the human predicament, isn't it? You are busy every moment of your life building that model and then trying to make the moments in front of you match the model you built. Okay, I explained to you, you do not have to stare at your mind. That's what it means. That's what enlightenment is. That's what spiritual awakening is. It's not that your mind changed into something spiritual. That's ridiculous. That's called spiritual ego. You spiritualize the ego. I used to eat meat, now I'm a vegetarian or vegan. And I used to be a little tart with people, now I'm very loving and very nice. Okay? Well, when somebody says, you're not so nice, you get defensive instantly. It's the same ego. It's just wearing different clothes. The only thing that's different is if you can learn that your consciousness does not have to stare at your mind. It does not have to. And you've experienced times when it doesn't that are very, very pleasant. I use the example of you're driving down a road and stuff's going on in your head. You turn the corner. I'm sure this happened to you. You're not expecting anything. And the sun it's like a giant ball at the end of the road. All the different colors, beautiful lavenders and everything. It blows your mind. You are no longer in your ego mind, are you? Your consciousness has been distracted. God, it's such a good word. It's been distracted from you to that sunset. How do you feel? You know what kind of words you use? Oh, I can't explain it to you. I, I don't know what happened. It was like a spiritual experience. I, I, I felt the presence of God. Yep, you did because you let go of staring at yourself and the consciousness expanded beyond yourself by focusing on something other than yourself and you felt the spirit of your spirit. You felt the expansiveness of your consciousness. Do you understand? Have you had experiences like that? Music can do it, can't it? It can just all of a sudden take you away from yourself. Why? Because you focused on the music more than you focused on your mind. If you're listening to the music, like a music critic, oh, I don't know that note, he should hit a little bit higher. Oh no, look at that, I don't like, she missed that note. You have no right to be a critic because you're not listening to music, you're listening to your mind. Like an art critic walks up to him and hey, I don't know, pastels were a little nicer than the other painting. Was, Get away from me. <laughs> you have no right to say anything because you're, you're experiencing your mind's reaction to the painting, you're not experiencing the painting. And guess what? That goes for music, not gonna like this, goes for paintings, but for people, any person you meet, you have nothing to do with them. They have nothing to do with you. 
You have no right to start building a model inside you. I like him. I don't like him. Oh my God, he wore a bow tie. I think oh, people were. What are you doing? And it's like an art critic looking at a beautiful Monet or Renoir and criticizing it. And that's all you do is criticize people. Why? They're supposed to be the way you want them to be. No, they're not. <laughs> understand. E- even their mind is the sum of their learned experiences. Psychology says that. The mind is the sum of your learned experiences. You don't know their experiences. You weren't there. They're not supposed to be the way you want them to be. They are the result of all the forces that cause their mind to be that way and the fear of being lost and building the ego. They're the result of all the evolution of their soul and every moment ever happened to them. And you have the nerve to say, I don't like them. Who are you? That's just us unbelievable. So this is because you're addicted to your mind and because your mind is talking all the time and because you think you need things to be a certain way for you to be okay. No, to be okay, you need to stop staring at your mind. It is not about getting what you want and avoiding what you don't want. That has never lasted for anybody. The richest people in the world, do you know the suicide rate amongst the advanced Western countries is higher than anywhere in the world? Well, I don't get it. They're getting things, <laughs> right? No, getting things doesn't do it because all you're doing is spoiling your ego more and more. You're saying, yes, I felt good when I got the new car, right? How long does it feel any different than the old car? Month, two months, whatever. How long it took for you to drive other people around and show off? Okay, then it's a car. It's a house. There's no way somebody built a house of their dreams and they didn't want anything else or found the person of their love or had the child Is it? No way. It doesn't work to get what you want because you have something going on inside of you that is causing your consciousness to be addicted to staring into a mind that is not okay. It can't be okay. Why? Because it's only okay if every single moment happens exactly the way it wants and not just if every moment happens the way it wants now. Ready? The moments before were supposed to be the way I want. How many of you still have problems with your past? How many of you ever have thoughts about your past that didn't bother you? See? Well, you're never going to fix that. You know you're going to make every moment in front of you match what your mind wants. And you sure as heck are never going to make the moments that happened before you didn't like not happen. And you just had a chance about your future being exactly the way you want it to be. It is not supposed to be the way you want it to be. It's supposed to be the way it is. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it good. It doesn't make it moral. It doesn't make it just. It just is. It just is. Experiences happen and make people be the way they are. Someone asked me the other day, well, what about people's prejudice? How can you live with people with prejudice? It's not whether I like it or not. People are prejudiced. There are people that are prejudiced. Why? Go ask them. Go ask their father. Go ask all the situations that ever happened to them that made them prejudiced. They had experiences. Yogananda, great enlightened master, once said, but by God's grace, there goes myself. There's somebody to understand what's going on. If you had had the experiences they had, grew up in their family with their poverty, with this and that, whatever the heck it is, every single experience they had, you'd probably be thinking exactly the way they were. They're programmed that way. So you start off by understanding that this is a problem. The ego mind is a problem, not a solution. To run after what the ego mind wants is like a spoiled child throwing a tantrum at two years old in an apartment store and you're sitting there saying, which one do you want? Do you want this one? Oh, no, no this one? What are you, crazy? You, you would never do that. But you do it with yourself. Every single thing it wants, you try to get. It's spoiled to death. So spirituality is the ability, and we can talk about how to do that, but you're capable, the ability to detach your consciousness from staring at your ego mind. It's not about destroying the ego mind. It's not about renouncing the world. It's not. It's about consciousness does not have to stare at your mind. Now it does for the same reason a hammer drops on your toe. There are lots of places to put your consciousness. You put it on your toe, don't you? A stupid place to put it. The toe hurts. Why do you want to put it there? Because you don't know how not to. It distracts your consciousness because it's making the most noise and your consciousness gets drawn to it. And that's what happens with your ego mind. If all of a sudden the things about something happened to you 10 years ago, somebody said something, your heart starts hurting, your mind starts bothering you. It's not even happening. It's making the most noise. Okay, understand that. The thing about distraction is really big. Why? Distraction is about consciousness being pulled down to an object of consciousness. And then it doesn't know how to get off. And usually the object it pulls down to our negative because it's stored a bunch of negative stuff. It's about fear, anxiety, need, all that kind of stuff. 
that's the whole problem. The problem is not what's going on in the world. Yes, it's a problem. It's, it's all kinds of things. It's not even a problem. It's the result of everything that ever happened. Everything's the way it is because of everything that made it be that way. Does that mean you can help? Of course you can help. But you're not. most people that are activists are not trying to help. They're trying to help themselves. They're sitting there saying, I can't stand that this person's like that. I can't believe they think like that. I'll feel better if they're gotten rid of and we win. It's about you. It's still about your ego getting what it wants. Someday you wake up and realize this ego is a problem, not a solution. Can I get my consciousness off of me so that I'm clear? So that I'm coming into the moment with respect, honor, appreciation? What do you mean appreciation? Would you rather be in outer space, left out there with nothing going on for the rest of your life? Raise your hand. So you ended up on this little planet in the middle of nowhere with all this stuff going on. And all you do is complain. All you do is say, I can't handle this. This is not right. This is not good. I don't like this. Well, okay. You just ruined your life. And everybody else's too, by the way. I like being around somebody who complains all the time. I like being around somebody who's always positive and high and, and looking at the bright side of things. And doing. It doesn't mean you don't do what you can to help, but you do what you can to help them, not help yourself. I'm telling you, most of the time, like that, that anti-abortion person many, many years ago that actually shot a doctor that performed abortions. Now, you can have your own views about abortion. I don't care. It's wonderful. Fine. Everybody has views. But give me a break. If you're pro-life and you shoot a doctor, there's something drastically twisted about that. That's what the mind can do. That mind said that was rational. Of course it does. Okay. You want to learn not to be like that. It's not about your views. It's about your openness. It's about your honoring and respecting things are the way they are because of all the forces that made them be that way. Now, once I'm clear, I always like to end this way. Once I'm clear and I'm not caught in my ego mind, I'm able to see, yes, I have one. I just don't listen to it. That's what the great masters teach that. They don't teach you've destroyed your ego mind. Why? It's a thing in the universe. A vacuum cleaner, a blender. They're okay. Just don't stare at them all the time. They get to exist. They're things in the universe. They have reasons that they are the way they are. You destroy. You're on his guru. Great master. High as they come. This was his teaching. An ignored guest quickly leaves. If you fight with them, they stay. If you dote all over them, they stay. An ignored guest quickly leaves. He just told you how to get rid of your ego. Just don't pay attention to it. Treat it like a child throwing a tantrum. I told you, someday you'll get to the point, you'll look at it, and you realize, oh, that's what we're talking about. It's this thing. It has edges. It's not the whole universe. I just was in too close. Here it is. It's the thing that talks about itself. It's very committed to itself. That's all it ever talks about. It's unbelievable. So you look at it, and you look at it, and you realize, I'm here looking at you. Don't fight with it. Just look at it. And I told you, I remember the day I got to that point. You don't fight with it. You just look at it with love and compassion. It's messed up. You messed it up. You're the one who stored all that stuff you couldn't handle. And you look at it and just say, it's okay. Your days are numbered. I'm getting out. And then the next step, I don't want to talk to these high states. The next step, first you're fighting with you. I can't stand it. No, 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 no. That doesn't help. One iota. Don't, don't, don't spank the kid that's throwing a tantrum. Not going to do anything. You hear me? You look at it, look at it, and someday if you look at it, you're going to come back and say, Mickey, uh, I was fine before you made me look at it. No, you were not fine. Now you're looking at it. <laughs> you were not fine. You were just doing what it said to do. You were just getting the kid what he wanted. As long as they give the kid what he wants, he behaves. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens later. All right? And so you, you get back and you see it, and there it is. You stop fighting with it. Okay, fine. I have an ego. Good. So there it is. I see it. Can you relax in the face of it? That's what I found. Can you, in there noticing it, not do anything about it, just relax. If you can relax in the face of it, then you can be okay even when it's not. Well, what do I do if, if I got fired and, and I don't have a job? Well, I know what you're going to do. You're going to look for another job. But you're either not going to like looking for another job or you enjoy looking for another job. Which one you want? This is the situation that you're going through in life. Are you going to enjoy your life? Only once I get a job and have more money. No, you just set a condition on enjoying your life. Why don't you sit there and say, of course I'm going to enjoy my life. Well, if you want to enjoy your life, you have to enjoy every moment of your life. Why? Because that's the moment of your life. You can't sit there and wait for something to be the way you want it to be to enjoy yourself. 
you'll be like everybody else, unhappy, causing all kinds of trouble, right? So you sit there and say, there's a moment in front of me. I'm going to learn. You can't do it now, but I'm going to learn to enjoy the moments of my life. If I got fired, I get to meet new people. I go to business things. I dress up different. I do all kinds of things. But what if I can't find a job? I do the best I can to live with what I have. I am not going to not enjoy my life. Why? Because what's the purpose of my life? I'm not enjoying it, okay? So you didn't put conditions on it. You didn't say, I can only enjoy my life if it's what I want. But then you're not going to enjoy your life, are you? Even if you're rich. I told you once, because I've met very rich people. If you were number one richest person in the world on Forbes list last year, and you're number two this year, it bothers you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we don't stand a chance, do we? Okay? And so you wake up and you realize, I got to find my liberation from myself. All right, how do you do that? You don't fight with it. You look at it and you just say, I'm going to start to learn to handle that my ego is a problem, but I don't have to be a problem. The child could throw a tantrum. I have to spank it. I have to give it what it wants, but I have to get embarrassed. I mean, it, two, three year olds, they do that kind of stuff, right? So I can deal with it without yelling, screaming, spanking, and without giving it what it wants. How? Figure it out. Be a little more subtle, correct? That's what psychology is all about. Deal with it calmly. You're centered. You can deal with it, and so on. It's the same thing with your ego mind. It's going to sit there and say, but I don't like what she said. I don't like what she said. But I'm going to tell you a secret. I learned how to deal with my mind that way. Mind, shh, mind, listen to me, shh, quiet. Can you change what she said? No. Then the fact that you don't like it is rather irrelevant <laughs> because it got said, all right? And you can't, you have no time machine. You can't go back and make it not be said. But uh, there's no buts. Did it get said? Yes. Can you make it not be said? No. Okay, then let's learn how to deal with it. You have two choices. Resist or accept. How can I accept it? Because it got said. For you to deny that it got said is going to make you very, very sick. Why? Because it did get said. You can't make it not be said. So either you resist that it got said. You can't make it not be said. But when it comes into me, I'm going to suppress it. I'm going to deny it. I'm going to get mad about it. I'm going to resist that it got said. Or I'm going to sit there and say, I'm standing on the planet Earth. There's 8.5 billion people, and I happen to be standing next to somebody who said this. 8.5 billion people said something else. <laughs> I just didn't have to be standing there. That's all acceptance. I accept that this happened. Well, that's rather big of you because it did happen. I don't understand. Right? I'll tell you what. I'm very magnanimous today. I've decided to accept that Saturn has rings. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Reality always wins. If it happened, it actually happened. You better accept it. Now, accepting it means, okay, it happened. I accept that it happened. Doesn't mean I like it. There's a part of me didn't like it at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be thinking about it, would I? There's definitely ego part. The ego's there. Remember that? We accepted the fact that it's there. The ego does not want to be talked to that way. That was insulting, and I, I resent that. Okay, it's called resistance, all right? But there's all the reaction. But I either am going to carry it around for the rest of my life and have it bother me and not like you ever again or anyone who looks like you or anyone who starts to talk like as if it could have come out that way. Come on, you're not sensitive you get. Either that's going to go on or I'm going to sit there and say, okay, it got said. I am able to handle that it got said. I can handle it. I can accept it. All right? And you let it pass and then there may be something you do about it or may not. You know, maybe they said something and ran away. You know, okay, I can't talk to them. Maybe they said something and they were having a really bad day. And you sat there and you let it go through and you realized I can handle this. And you looked at them and you felt compassion. You felt sorry that they're having such a bad day that they said something like that. It wasn't personal. It's not personal. It's what's going on inside of them that came out their mouth. Not what's going on inside of you. Nothing's personal. They have a whole life, a whole history that made them say what they said. Wow, now we're talking spiritual, are we? You start working with yourself that way. You work and realize the consciousness is capable of letting go, of experiencing moments even though the ego didn't like them. Great Master Ramakrishna, I can't even talk about him. He was a very great master, very high, highly enlightened being. 
Somebody once asked him. He's in ecstasy all the time. He's danced. Oh, my God. He was just going. <laughs> they used to have to stand behind him all the time because he'd go into ecstasy and fall over backwards. Big problem, all right? <laughs> Since he was six. He's a very great soul. So somebody once asked him, Light Master, Ramakrishna, Master, does an enlightened master ever feel anger? It's so beautiful. It's one of the most important things he left for us. Because he said, yes. Whoa! An enlightened master feels anger? He said, it's like riding on water. What difference does it make? It comes, it passes right through. It leaves no marks. You can't see what it wrote in water, can you? It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means it passed through. That's what we're talking about. Notice the ego's still there. It's not true you're only human, but you do have one, but you are watching one. You're the consciousness that's aware of the humanness. Can you be comfortable with that? That's what he's saying, that a great being still has that. So there's a human there, isn't there? There's all this stuff there. But consciousness is aware of it. It isn't it, it's aware of it. So that's your way out. That's your liberation. That's your freedom. You're already free. You're just staring at something that's not. <laughs> okay? And so you learn to little by little. That's what I teach. That's what the new book, Living on Tether, really stresses. I understand you have trouble with the ego. Everybody does. It's a strong thing. You made it be the most important thing in your life. Why? You stored the things that bothered you the most and the things that you liked the most. So of course it's the most important thing in your life. But it's not you. It's just something you're staring at. You are very great. You are what Christ talked about. My Father and I are one. You are a very great being. The consciousness is a great, very great thing. It's God. It is, it is. Man was created in the image of God. God is universal consciousness. The total energy consciousness of the universe. And that's what you are. But you are staring at this little tiny thing. How do you get out? Little by little. You practice. You practice. Oh my God, I hope you hear me. You practice like you practice a piano, you practice a sport. You practice letting go of your ego. Something happens, a small thing, somebody says something, and the driver in front of you is not driving the way you want. It's raining, you don't want to get out, you don't want to rain. Just these tiny little stupid things. There's something wrong with your jobs, you didn't like what somebody said. There's all this stuff. If you want to, you can get all caught up in it and live in your ego and let it ruin your life. Or you can sit there and say, look, I can't change it anyway, so I might as well accept it. This is where I am, this is what happened, it's raining. And so basically, you let go. What does that mean? You, you do riding on water. It's not easy at first. You see the experience is not nice, but you relax and give it the room to pass. You're not trying to make jealousy not be jealous. Guess what? Jealousy does not know how not to be jealous. Everything has its nature. Anger has its nature. Jealousy has its nature. Self-consciousness has its nature. Embarrassment has its nature. Guilt has its nature. Insecurity has its nature. Everything has its nature. It's a thing in the universe, is it not? How do you know? Because I see it. Did you create jealousy? No one ever knew what jealousy was ever before you felt it. Is that right? It's a thing. Do people know what that means, jealousy? Do you know what it means? Okay, it's a thing in the universe. It's not yours. It's a thing in the universe that egos can feel. Can you relax in the face of it and realize it's just something I'm experiencing at this moment, it's okay, and just relax deep enough? Now, with big things like jealousy, you can't. But the driver in front of you didn't use the blinker? You don't have to tell everybody. <laughs> you hear me? It's just, or it's raining on your birthday. Why is it raining on my birthday? What did I do? You didn't do anything. So you catch your ego doing stupid things, making itself uncomfortable, and just relax. What should I do when my ego gets uncomfortable? Relax. Relax. I can't. I can't. I can't. Somebody died. I don't understand what you're talking about. How can I relax? Okay, I agree that in a big thing like that, right now you can't relax. But you can relax if the driver in front of you is driving slower than you want to. You can relax if it's raining when it wanted to. You can relax if you have a thought about something that happened 20 years ago. That's not ever happening anymore. Let it pass, and it will. And then what will happen, you'll get better at this. You'll get better at relaxing better at releasing, and something bigger will happen. And you realize, oh, I can do this. I can handle this. And the next thing you know, you're not so addicted to every little thing your ego's saying. And guess what? Your ego likes that. It doesn't want to be a neurotic mess. It's just trying to be okay. And someday, you'll get high enough in there. You're now centered high enough in there, and something happens, and the ego starts to get disturbed, and it realizes it looks back up to you. Instead of looking outside for what can happen, it looks up to you. 
and it realizes that there's something inside of me that's okay. Why don't I hang out there? You raise yourself. You raise it on up. And eventually it gets very high and it goes higher and higher. And, and eventually it, it's not addicted anymore to the mind. And I always end with that. Mayor Baba said, my consciousness was a drop staring at me. When it stopped doing that, it fell into the ocean behind it, into the source. Find a drop of water that fell into an ocean. You'll never find it. It merged, became one. My father and I are one. You merge, that drop merges. That's where the great masters went. But there's a whole growth pattern in between. And it starts with realizing resistance destroys you. Acceptance, surrender, acceptance. But that doesn't mean you don't work with the world. But first let go. Then see if there's something you can do to help. Not help you. Help the situation, help the other people, become a servant. So we talked about the meaning of life. Now you understand the meaning of life. Meaning of life is self-realization. Meaning of life is evolving beyond staring at your ego and coming into harmony with something much greater than you. Mm, Jagrath.